I'd like an apron that covers my boobies in the front of me. You can see what can be arranged. Need to look it's, called it's called an adult bib, Dad said, but I'd like an apron. So kind of like what this one was, but I'm um, not with the tricky tra ties and a lot better fitting and made. And where I can alter the length of the neck band. So like halter? Yeah. Oh, no, probably better not halter. Hi, crafters. Today I'm going to make my mother an apron, but I've got some tricky timeline stuff going on because I just finished this apron today and the video is like sitting there all ready to be edited. I just, I'll probably upload this Mother's Day. So I don't know if this will be like uploaded before or after because this is more important. So after making this, which came from the original that I made a few years ago being this, Mum has requested her own apron that's reversible and we went through our fabrics. It's gonna be a little bit trickier. The good part is for at least the base layer, we know the size of the apron because mum wants the same sort of sized apron as me down here, which is a bit too wide for me, but perfect for her. Same pleating, which is easy, but she also wants a bib with a necktie and we have two different fabrics for not just the actual apron of it, but also for the ties. So for my waistband, I just used one fabric and one piece that I folded in half. For hers, I'm using two fabrics and I don't know how I'm gonna put this all together, but I'm thinking I'll cut out like this part of the apron first, sew that all together, that will be fine. Then I'll make what this waistband will be, although I probably need mum to measure her waist. And then I'll work out what kind of shape bib and how big she wants that to be and make the other ties. But when sewing it together, I'm probably going to have to sew these ties to the front bib part of the apron. So that to the waistband so that I have like one side, like the top half all done before I attach the waistband to the bottom skirt, if that makes sense. Like this is gonna be the easiest to cut and put together, but also the last piece I'm gonna have to put in because I want it all pleated and everything. And it's just gonna be easier in my mind if the waistband with the bib is all in one piece before I attach it to here. So it's almost like the way I did the waistband previously, though now it's gonna be two different fabrics sewn together. I can do it, it's just a trick of how. So first, wherever my bloody sewing Bible is, I don't think I've written it down yet, actually. Hopefully we should have enough of this fabric and there's definitely gonna be enough of that for the ties. These, there should be enough fabric for, hypothetically. My sewing room is a bit of a mess at the moment and that's not going to change. So what I did with my current apron that I think is going to work with these two as well, especially for the patterns on them, is this lovely floral. Is cut it down so I cut the 22 inches long ways, cut three panels, sew the panels together, sort of deal. So this is a standard cotton from memory that should be like 22 inches. Yeah, about 20, so 44 inches across. And I don't know about this one. I feel like this one's a bit bigger. 29 inches, but I can cut this down to fit this. If that makes sense. And then use a bit extras that I cut off there. The little extras that are going to be on that side of it. She wants a phone pocket as well, so I'm going to have to check. Pretty sure she's the iPhone X, XL, whatever the latest one is in the large size. And she wants a little loop that she can put a tea towel through. Or a tea towel onto. It's just going to be fun. I'm going to flatline everything together, I think. I have to iron all the fabric so that it's evenly in half because I am only cutting halves. I am not cutting the full width of fabric. And then we'll keep going from there. But first I apparently have to make dinner. But yeah, so I'm gonna cut three blocks, three rectangles of this that are 22 inches by whatever long, which I guess is 44 wide. So 22 long, 44 wide. I'll cut this to be 22 by 44 so that it matches the bottom one. Flat line them together, which when it came to this apron, it was just basting the edges on the sewing machine because it's just cotton, a bit easier. And then work out what size I want the bib on her so that I can cut those pieces out, flat line them together. Or I could just really sew them together on the sides and the top will be sewn together when I do, once I have these done so that I can have the top ties inside to sew up that top seam. And I'll just sandwich the bottom into the waistband when I sew the waistband together. I hope that is all making sense to you. I might draw the ideas out. Or you'll just see it when I do it. But it makes sense in my mind of how to like construct it, you know? And hopefully at the end of all this, we have enough fabric to make little pot holders for her as well. At the biggest, it will probably be 23 as well. So this should be more than enough fabric and this will be 
more than enough fabric as well. Okay, so let's go make dinner and then come back to this and start cutting. Dinner, I might, you know, measure mum up. I should take my measuring tape, attach it to my apron, and then I can walk around with it. Where did I put my measuring tape is the question. I do have a sewing apron I'm working on out of calico, but I'm still hand sewing down the um, pleats on that one. Just hand filling those stitches. I think I need to hand fill the seams as well and then get on to finishing off the waistband. Spoiler alert, I have not finished the sewing apron as of yet. I just haven't finished this hand stitching since I've moved. Here, what I'm doing is cutting out the three panels for the skirts, which were about 26 inches deep each. And I'm also cutting the panel for the front of mum's bib. I can't remember what size that was, although hopefully I have it written down somewhere and can put it on the screen for you. I did find with this stamp fabric that because it was so wide, I just taped two rulers together and used a rotary cutter rather than using the one that's built in together. Now I'm just cutting the strips for the waistband and for the straps. The waistband I believe was about six inches and the straps I cut at about three inches, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I kept the selvages on all the strips. So I've just gone through here and sewn them together. And then I've gone through and I've sewn the brown and pink together on one side so that later it fits a bit better. On the thinner tubes I end up stitching both sides together and turning it into a tube. Also you can see here that I'm just testing it on mum to make sure the small straps are actually long enough. Here I am just basting all the edges on the main apron fabric together to make it a lot more manageable and a lot easier to use. There is nothing quite like flatlining and basting them together. I'm using, a, I think, the longest stitch that I have on the machine just to make time go faster. I could have pad stitched or something, but because they were both pretty structured cottons, this is all that I needed to do to keep them soundly together. I'm just cutting an iron-on light to medium weight interfacing to go in the straps of the apron and in the actual bib part of the apron. This has proven great in both our aprons because it helps keep that structural integrity of the actual straps with helping the fabric look nice as well. Less ironing. Anything that involves less ironing is just always nice. I did have to cut extra as well because the straps were really long. Here I'm just trimming off the excess of the stamp fabric to make sure they're the same size. That's just to make life easier for me later on and I don't need to have six e inches of extra fabric there. Here I'm working on the bib or the top part of the apron for mum. I did go through and measure where she wanted it to sit on the waist and how wide she wanted it to be at the top. And we came up with this vaguely, I guess, hexagon. Transferred it onto the actual fabric and now I'm cutting into facing the same size and cutting some from the stamp fabric. Here you can see me turning the tubes of the straps inside out and I do go through in a second and iron them flat. It would have been boring if I kept two here. I use a nice chocolate brown in the bobbin to match the actual brown underneath and then I use a really nice embroidery brown that matches the slightly brown speckles in the pink fabric. This entire video I have a different thread in the bobbin than I do at the top of the machine because it was just necessary. I top stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the side just to help keep the fabric sitting nice and flat. I'm changing to a cream cotton for some reason for sewing up the sides and pinning the bib into place. On mum we're just measuring exactly where we want the straps to be and I'm pinning them in and sewing all around the side and the top with the straps inside, obviously, as you can see, leaving the bottom free so that I can turn it out and trim off any excess. And this is what it looks like so far. And then once again, top stitching, which is probably why I changed the cotton. I do top stitch the bottom of this as well, just to hold everything in place, it worked well. And this is what it looks like on me. Clearly not the intended user. Now we've reached the fun part of our program, where I get to sew the skirt, which is arguably the easiest and the hardest part of this entire thing. First, I go through, put the right sides together. So I think I used a half inch seam allowance for it. I then have to remove the basting stitches that I put in earlier. Folding one piece of the fabric back that's going to be the top of the fold seam, I trim down the rest of the excess seam fabric to be a quarter inch. I did have to choose this carefully because one part 
if the right side of the fabric had the selvage on it and the other side didn't, so I chose the side that didn't have an obvious selvage on it. With the part of the seam that is still a half an inch, I fold that over the quarter inch and then pin it to the fabric so that I can top stitch over that. Really machine falling the fabric down to hide that seam and it just seemed to be the best option at the time. And it really was. For the edges of the skirt, I end up unpicking the basting stitches, turning the fabric so the right sides are together and sewing down that stitch, going back well, turning it right sides out and then top stitching along there about a quarter of an inch away as well because that's really the only way to finish a seam, according to me. And then I went through and ironed everything to make it all nice and pretty. Hi crafters, editing Cassie here because I messed up and I have either lost footage or I didn't record anything because we were moving at the time and everything was happening. I'm going to explain to you what I did from here. So, the easiest part is the skirt. The last shot you saw was me measuring out my pleats and marking them within this seam allowance and then I went through pleated the entire skirt apart from the front panel, which you can see exactly how I did that in my previous apron video because it is the exact same thing. And then I started to stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the edge to hold all of the pleats in place without having to have the pins in it because that's just inconvenient. From there, I sewed the bib to this pretty pink waistband by um, having the right sides together and then I did a quarter of an inch and then I measured a bump and it didn't work well so we had to do it in more of a U shape just to help bring down the sides a bit. It just sat better on her when the bib didn't have a straight line at the bottom, it had a U shape like a smile my first. So I went back, unpicked that, sewed that down, it's perfect. Uh, and then I went and I sewed the pink to the bottom of the skirt as well um, with a quarter of an inch of allowance again and then turned it up so that it was sitting nice. I believe everything else is sewn on camera so hopefully we'll flick to that now. This is what it looked like after I was done. You can see where it's attached. I haven't put on the side straps yet. I just have them pinned into place and that's what it looks like. Really there's not much more to explain. I think I was trying to explain there. This is me now cutting out the pockets and the loops. So I pretty much measured my phone, measured mum's phone, and then decided to make strips that were as wide as I would need it to be for the seam allowance and so that I could sew them together with a quarter of an inch top stitch. And then as long as I felt like I would need as well with a little bit extra, because you always need a little bit extra. And here I'm just cutting it multiple times. Like I just measured this stuff so much and then cut it again and again and again and again and again. Um, I ended up sewing all the way around three sides leaving one edge still open so that I could flip them out. Then I went through, ironed the flat top, stitched them a quarter of an inch away. I don't know why I did that on all of them and pinned them down where I needed them. Sewed that down, then doing the top stitching again because I'm a monster. Here I was trying to make my first loop but it was way too thin and I had to make it a lot thicker if I ever wanted to pull it out. Once again I just cut it all down, flipped it out, ironed it and then top stitched a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And here I'm just pinning them into place and I'm picking on the pink where I wanted to put the uh, pocket for the other side but you can't really see this because I do it all out of frame for some frustrating reason and I can't explain to you what that frustrating reason is. Here I'm just sewing them into place as well. You can kind of see how like terrible the sewing room was at this point because we were halfway through moving. Here I'm just using my model also known as my mother to ensure the back straps are sewn into the right place for her and that she was comfy in it. Now that I have the straps where I want them, 
I've pinned them into place and then I'm using my wonder clips and my eyes just to put the brown fabric against the right sides of the pink slash the bib and sewing that top stitch into place about a quarter of an inch away. It might even, even have been half an inch and I trim it down later. I just use a basting stitch on this one and then you'll see me and then I try it on mum again to make sure it is all sitting properly. Stitch out a little bit just because one of the straps wasn't fitting quite perfectly and then stitch it down true and proper. I then go and sew up the, the bottom of the waistband where the bib and the skirt aren't so that I can just turn the ends which end up being the waistband straps out later on. It just makes life a lot easier at that point rather than having to top stitch the entire length of the waistband. And I'm just marking off I believe 45 degree so the edges are nice and pointed and cutting up any excess seam allowance which I also do for the other side as well. Here's where I'm actually attaching the pockets where I wanted them to sit on the stamp fabric. And now you get some lovely footage of me ironing my mum's entire apron, mainly the waistband. This is my new iron, by the way, that I got from Aldi. I'm in love with it. I'm still using it now at my new place because mum took the steaming iron. For the center of the waistband where it meets the skirt, I did fold that under the half inch seam allowance and iron it flat. And now I'm just going through and top stitching the entire band, taking my time and slowly going over the bit where it joins the skirt to start with because I really need that even and to make sure I caught everything. This ended up being my sealing stitch for that bottom middle waistband because I didn't need to hand fill it down. I will do it in future if I ever need to, but I didn't. And then I went and top stitched all over everywhere else to hold it into place and make sure it all matched. And here I believe one of the pockets went a bit weird, so I was just removing those stitches and fixing it up and top stitching again. Right now I'm doing pretty similar to what I did last time, is just measuring how far down I want the hem going and marking it all with the back, I think slightly longer than the front, although mine and mum's measurements are a bit different there and I go through and draw the straight line after I do the small markings I'm using the birch chalk chalk open as well just because I'm in love with that Here I'm cutting up all the excess fabric and making sure it all goes down nicely. And now I'm trying to decide which side I want the hem to go on. I ended up deciding that having the darker fabric peek through at the bottom on the cream side looked better than having it the other way around. Something about the floral let that stamp fabric just meld better whereas when we were trying it the other way the white was just too stark and showed up a lot more on the other side and here i am just finishing the top stitch of a hem i did a rolled hem when it came to the parts where i had the felled seams i did cut off that extra bit that would be rolled up in the hem because it made it a bit too bulky but other than that it wasn't a big issue this is me modelling mum's apron. Obviously it wasn't made for me so it does sit a little odd but this gives you an idea of how it sits. It does wrap around her nicely and cross slightly in the back. I don't have any video of her wearing this. Trust me, she's been wearing it. We just haven't been taking pictures or video of it because generally she doesn't have her hair done when she's in an apron. But it's comfy, it fits her well, it's something that she can put on by herself while her back is injured. And here's a picture of the lovely lady wearing her gift. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I will be getting 
more videos out more regularly now that we're all settled and life's calming down. <laughs> Subscribe if you know and you want to see any more. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever made an apron and how did it turn out for you? Would you make something like this or is double sided a bit too far for you? I've been doing some things at the moment now so hopefully there should be a few more videos coming out regularly at the moment but we'll see how this all goes and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!